What's up everybody, Camro here, and welcome to part 51 of my How to Make a Pokemon Game tutorial series. In this episode, we are going to be looking at time of day events. First, we're going to be looking at general events that check to see if it's daytime versus if it's nighttime. And then after that, we're going to be making our own specific time events where we're going to be checking the exact day, the month, we can check the hour, we can even check the specific minute. And then after that, we're going to look at a little bit of bonus time stuff like seasons. With that said, let's get into it. So I've made a little test map here where we're going to be doing most of our time checks, but one thing that I would actually like to do first is go to Route 7 in the default Essentials maps and copy this police officer. We can copy him and paste him into our map, and then let's click on him and look at him. So the first event page, there's really nothing special going on. He just says, this is what I say if you talk to me during the day. Really basic. But in the second event page, there's a switch here. If that switch is on, he'll say something else. He'll say, who goes there? This is what I say when you talk to me at night. So this switch is the key to checking his dialogue. This is what he says during the day. This is what he says during the night. Let's click on this. So it's switch 15 is night. And this is all determined by your internal uh, clock on your computer. So I'm definitely recording this at nighttime. It's like midnight where I'm at, <laughs> but is day, we'll check to see if it's daytime. Is night, we'll check to see if it's nighttime. Is morning, afternoon, evening. There's more specific time intervals. But essentially, if I talk to him and it is nighttime, he'll say something else. Now, how do they determine what is nighttime versus what is daytime? Where are the exact hour cutoffs? Is it nighttime at seven o'clock or six o'clock or even eight o'clock at night? Well, we can go into our script editor and find out where they define it. I'm actually already there, so I'll, back, I'll step back a little bit and show you where it is. So this is from the very top. I scroll down a bit all the way around here to P field underscore time. And this is the script where they define a lot of time related stuff. There's a lot of really interesting stuff in here if you want to like get down into the nitty gritty. But I'm just going to scroll down a little bit here to line 42. This is where they define is day. And this is where they define is night and morning and afternoon and evening. So, is day, we'll check to see if time.hour is greater than or equal to five, and if time.hour is less than 20. So, time.hour is getting the exact time from our internal clock on our PC, and since it's midnight or 12 a.m., that's actually time zero. So right now on my computer, time.hour is zero. If I wait one hour from now, then time.hour will be one. And then this goes all the way up to 23, which is 11 o'clock at night. And then once it would be 24, that's just midnight for the next day. So then that's zero again. So a value of 12 would be noon. A value of 13 would be one o'clock PM. So I hope that makes sense. So it's daytime if it's greater than or equal to five. So if it's after five in the morning, and if it's less than 20. So less than 20 would be 12 plus eight. So if it's less than eight, so seven o'clock would still be considered daytime. Eight o'clock at night PM. So 7 PM is daytime. 8 PM is considered nighttime. If we wanted to, we could change this, but I'm not gonna mess around with this. Like we shouldn't mess around with this stuff. This is all something that we don't need to change. It's just nice to look at it. Like, if you want to, you can see what nighttime is. You can see what morning is. And one thing that I want to point out really quickly is they use ands and ors. If you're more confident with your programming logic, you can mess around with these in, a, in an example I'm going to show you later. But right now, just know that if you don't want to be too crazy, then you don't have to do this. Like, you don't have to worry about any programming. But if you do want to, you totally can too. So, you know, just do what you're comfortable with. So, morning would be if it's greater than or equal to 5 in the morning, so 5 a.m., and if it's less than 10, so 10 a.m. So, from 5 a.m., actually, no, less than 10 would be 9 a.m. That's so early in the morning, oh my gosh. Dang, I maybe, I, maybe I'm just a guy who wakes up late. <laughs> Anywho, we can close this. That's pretty interesting. So, if we wanted to, we could make it so that way there's a trainer who only battles us at night. Let's do that right now. 
I'm going to go to Route 3 on the default Essentials maps and just copy this youngster. We can go in, we can paste this, and here's his first page where you actually fight him. Let's make it so that way this switch is night, so he will only like see you and fight you if it's nighttime. But right now, it's also making it so that way he'll actually only appear if it's nighttime. So what we need to do is copy and paste, and let's make this first page his default page, where he'll, he'll just always be there. We can turn this switch off, and we can actually just delete all of this stuff here. Delete, and make him say, hello, cool. So if it's not nighttime, he'll just be there and you can talk to him and he'll, and he'll say hello. But if it is nighttime, then he'll battle you and he'll like lock eyes with you and everything. And then on the third event page, that's if you beat him, then uh, he'll say, you can't get a trainer event simpler than me, cool. So we could invert this if we want to. We could make it so that way he'll only battle us if it's daytime. So you could mess around with this stuff to make it so that way there's like time specific trainers, if you're into that. I actually never was too big into it, but you know, it's nice to have the options if you want to put that stuff in your Pokemon game. One thing to consider though is people can always change the internal time of their computer. They can change the date, they can change the hour, they can change the minute. It's just something to consider. So this isn't like foolproof. People can potentially exploit this if they choose to, but hey, that's on them. If they want to make the game less fun for themselves, that's on them. Anywho, let's get into our new events where we define our own custom time. Let's make a new event here. Let's make it an NPC. Let's, uh, I don't want him to be a chef. How about an old man? It's this old man. This old man. Let's make it so that way he'll only talk to us if it's December. So, let's do a conditional branch. Go to the fourth page. Go to our script. And this is the function that we're going to be using so much now for our own custom time events. This is the bread and butter of these types of events. It's a function called PB get time now. And then you can do dot and then M O N. That is how you get the month and month returns a number from one to 12. One is January, two is February, so on and so forth up to 12. 12 is December. So, if pbgettimenow.mun is December, or if it's 12, then it would be December. So, if it's December, we can do show text where he'll say, Yo, what's up? <laughs> I'm really bad at typing on this, so I'm on my laptop right now. My main computer that I re record on exploded, so hopefully this still looks good. Anyway, if it's not December, he'll say, Go away, you fool. This guy's very rude. And luckily for us, it is December, at least according to our computer. So, if the month is equal to 12, he'll say, yo, what's up? Otherwise, he'll just say, go away, you fool. Let's run it. Let's get into our game and check this. Here we are. It is nighttime, as you can see. I hit enter and he says, Halt, who goes there? Cool. So it's nighttime, but is it December? Well, my computer says it's December. What does this old man say? Yo, what's up? Cool, it worked. So, let's uh, let's do something crazy right now. Let's go back into my, com my uh, computer and change the time. Let's make it so that way it's not December. Let's make it so it's November. There we go. So according to my computer, now it's November 1st. What does this old man have to say now? Go away, you fool. I didn't even close the game. That's because PB Get Time Now is run when I talk to him. So it's actually up to date every single time without even closing the app. So it's November 1st. He says, go away, you fool. Let's change it back. Let's go back to the day that it actually is today. Well, I guess it's... Tuesday now. I'm recording this at around midnight. Anywho, let's change it back to Tuesday the 11th of December at midnight. Without, I still haven't closed the game. And he says, yo, what's up? Cool. That's pretty awesome. So we can do this with even more things. Let's close this. 
if we wanted to, we could make it so that way he'll only talk to us if it's the 11th of a month. Let's say if get time now dot day is equal to 11. This will make it make it so that way if it's the 11th of any month, then he'll talk to us. We could do this for any value. I mean, just keep it within reason. You can't type in 40 because no months go to 40, but you could type in 29, you know, 30. So if it's the 11th and check this out, we can get even more specific with it by doing the programming thing. Two ands is essentially like saying and. So if it's the 11th and PB get time now dot mon is equal to 12. Oh, let me type that 12. This is saying if it's December 11th, he'll talk to us. So if the day is 11 and the month is 12, he'll say, yo, what's up? Otherwise, he'll call us a fool. And I don't want to be called a fool. I've been feeling like a fool a lot. So this old man is really going to cripple my self-esteem. Old man, what do you have to say? Yo, what's up? Ah, thank you. It's December 11th, so he says, yo, what's up? If I change it to December 5th, the Dark Ages before Smash Bros. Ultimate was released, I hit enter and he says, go away, you fool. Cool. That is pretty cool. Let's go back to our actual date now. So, let's make, a, let's make this old man a little bit more interesting, shall we? Let's make it so that way he is an item shop that only sells you items at night on a Thursday. No, on a Monday. Because, well, actually Tuesday. Screw it. It's Tuesday. Let's make it so that way he'll only sell us items at night on a Tuesday. So, let's do that. First, let's do our time check. So, we would want to do something else. Instead of day, we would want to type W day. And the way that W day works is that um, you need to type in a value from one to seven. One is Sunday, two is Monday, and three should be Tuesday. I want to make 100% sure though. Let's, uh, let's just make it so that way if W day is equal to three, he'll talk to us. And then from there we can get even more specific. So it's Tuesday, so W day should be three. Blushes confirm. Hello, old man. Go away, okay. I think I was incorrect. I think that needs to be two. W day, I think Sunday is zero, and then Monday is one, and then Tuesday is two. I'll put the correct values on the screen. Hopefully I don't appear to be too much of a bumbling fool. Let's get in there. So if W day is equal to two, he says, yo, what's up, cool. So Tuesday is two. I guess that makes sense, doesn't it? Tuesday, cool. So if it's a Tuesday and if it's nighttime, he'll open up a store. So we can do something crazy here. And PB get time now dot hour. So Let's make it so that way he's only open from, say, 10 o'clock at night to 4 o'clock in the morning. How's that sound? So, if the hour is greater than or equal to 22, and then we have to do these lines up here. So up above your enter key in the top right of the keyboard, there should be these lines. You can hold shift and hit them. Doot, doot. That's an or. Let's see. We're getting a little bit more complicated here. I need to put like parentheses around these now to ensure that this like programming works properly. Hold on here. I mean, there is another way to do it. And I guess I can break it down in another method also. I can show you there are two, two ways to do this. So... If the time is greater than or equal to 22, or if PB get, oh gosh, did I type caps lock? I'm murdering this keyboard now, aren't I? Now dot hour is less than five. So PB get time now dot hour is saying basically, if it's earlier than five in the morning, so four in the morning, 
3 in the morning, 2 in the morning, 1, and then 0 for midnight. And then, or, if it's greater than or equal to 22. So, that's checking to see if it's 10 o'clock at night to 4 in the morning, and it's a Tuesday. Now, let's make it the item shop. What we can do is go to a town, like Larusian town in our default essentials maps, go to their town mart, go into our guy here, and just uh, copy this. Now, let's go back to our old man, paste up in here, and let's edit his text a little bit. And he'll say, I'm the Tuesday I'm the Tuesday night item seller. There we go. So if it's Tuesday night, he'll say, I'm the Tuesday night item seller and start selling us items. Let's make it so that way he only sells us rare candies. We can delete most of this stuff. There we go. And type in rare candy. Bada boom. There we go. He's the Tuesday night item seller. What a cool guy. In fact, if we wanted to make another item, we could do comma colon, and then that item, like Moonstone. This guy's really cool. So if it's Tuesday night, he sells us rare candies and Moonstones. Otherwise, he tells us to go away and calls us fools. This should work. I'm crossing my fingers that it does, but if it doesn't, I've got another method that I can do to show you, but this should work. I'm the Tuesday night item seller. Sweet, it's Tuesday night, according to my computer right there. It's midnight, essentially. Well, 20, min 20 minutes after midnight on a Tuesday. I'm the Tuesday night item seller. Hello, how may I serve you? I would like to buy one rare candy. Oh, that's so expensive. I can't afford a rare candy. This crazy old man. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna leave you, old man. Go away. So, let's make it so it's not Tuesday night anymore. Let's change our time. Let's make it so that way it's Monday night. Hello, old man. Do you still want to sell me items at outrageous prices? Go away! Hey, it works. Let's change our time back. There we go. It is now Tuesday again. I'm the Tuesday night item seller. What a what a crazy old man. If you wanted to, you could get really specific with conditional branches. Like, I've already broken it down in previous uh, tutorial episodes, but conditional branches are awesome, very powerful. And with these time checks, you can make really crazy events. Let's make it so that way our Tuesday night item seller is up here. And now let's make a new guy. Let's make it so that way this guy will only talk to us. Uh, that's not an NPC. There we go. Or a girl. Let's make it an old lady. There we go. This old lady will only talk to us if it's like a specific time, a very specific time. We can make it so that way somebody could talk to us if it's 12.22 in the morning. So 22 minutes after midnight. We can make it 23 also, depending on how long it takes me to do this. <laughs> so, let's do a conditional branch here. Go back to that fourth page, do script, and let's do pb get time now dot hour equals zero. And pb get time now dot min for minute is equal to 23. There we go. And if both of those conditions are true, she'll say, hello, with a lot of O's. She'll say, hello. Otherwise, she'll say, no. Apply, okay. There we go. So, if it's 12.23 in the morning, she'll say, hello. It's currently not, though. It's 12.22. According to my computer, it's 12.22. In 15 seconds, though, it'll be 12.23. So she's saying, no, no, she doesn't want to talk, no, no, give it a couple more seconds though, three, two, okay, so she's saying no, now she's saying hello, the time changed, hello, hello, so this minute check is like, so crazy, if you wanted to, you could make it so that way she would only talk to you in a specific time frame of minutes. Like, you can make it so that way, if it's, if the hour is zero, so it's 12, and the minute is, like, greater than and equal to 30, do know that the minute 
goes up to 60 or 59 and then resets when it hits 60 because then it goes back to the next minute or rather to the next hour but now she'll only talk to us if it's 1230 or 1231 or 1232 all the way up to the end of 12 at 1259 and then when it hits one o'clock then she won't talk to us anymore so you can get really specific time windows with events if you want to that's really cool there's a lot of really cool things you can do now let's try messing around with this a little bit more and making it so that way a legendary pokemon only appears on a certain day let's make it that a new event so let's put a lugia here right here he is here's lugia he's just chilling there and let's do a new event next to him that will control it new event conditional branch if the date pb get time now dot day is 11 and pb get time now dot mun is equal to 12 so if it's december 11th then we can make it so that way lugia turns on and if it's not december 11th we can make it so that way lugia turns off so let's do this let's make it so that way if it's december 11th we can control a switch and let's just make it a new switch right here let's just call it lugia there we go so lugia will turn on if it's december 11th and then we can copy and paste this and then make it so that way lugia will turn off and then let's make it parallel process so it's essentially always running and always checking hopefully this doesn't bog the game down too much and now let's just turn this switch let's make it so that way if the switch lugia is on then lugia will appear here cool let's run it hopefully this will blow your minds i hope so there he is there's lugia it's december 11th check this out change date and time let's make it december 9th now okay lugia disappeared in our game that's pretty insane huh so this lugia is only present on the map while it's december 11th even if i go and i change my date and time it stays like perfectly updated isn't that crazy huh i think that's pretty cool if you wanted to you can make it so that way this occurs with a rock instead like let's do this let's make it a, a legit event i mean i got some time i hope you guys got some time let's make this a legitimate lugia that will only appear or the path will only open if it's the correct day Hopefully this doesn't take too long for me to do. I am a little bit rusty after all, but I think I can handle this. I've made a couple Pokemon maps back in my day. Okay, let's make there be a ledge here, and then a ledge over here, and then a ledge over here. I'm doing these ledges as an escape path just because if it's possible for somebody to get stuck in here and we don't want them to be stuck we always want there to be an opportunity for people to get unstuck so it's good to keep in mind like what would happen if they went in here while it was december 11th and then they just waited until it was december 12th like they saved in here then they would be stuck like if we do it rock system so let's make it so that way new event let's just make this a tile uh, we can make it a special rock um, Like this and then this will only appear if the switch Lugia is on There you go, so now there's a rock there and Then we can actually make it so that way Lugia is always present If we wanted to so like you got options here if you want to make your own event And then let me just make it super legitimate. Let me go to a legendary event copy all their stuff go back to our test map find Lugia paste all that in make a new event page where if self switch a is on there we go and then let's change the species here real quick 
Now this will be a legitimate Lugia event. And Lugia will appear at level 30. Cool. So, what we have here now is, if it's December 11th, this rock will disappear. If it's not December 11th, then the rock will just be there. It'll stay there. It'll be blocking the path. The path to Lugia. So you could do this if you wanted to, like, make time-specific stuff for your game. Like, look, there's a Lugia back there, but I can't get to him because this rock is in the way. Let's see. Oh, wait, no, I made it so that way the rock is there on December 11th. Oops, we need to invert this. Sorry about that. The rock is always on. New event page. If Lugia. There we go. So now, the rock is default there, blocking us. But then, if Lugia is on, the rock disappears. Sorry about that. There we go. Let's see, what does she say? She just says, a legendary Pokemon will appear here on December 5th. Wrong! It's December 11th, lady. Nice try, though. Cool. So, now the rock will disappear on December 11th. And we can get access to Lugia. Yay, it's December 11th, so I can go and fight Lugia. But, what if I'm standing next to Lugia, and I save and I wait a whole day? Some people will do that. You need, to, you need to handle these edge cases. I waited two days, actually. The rock is back. So I can catch Lugia, and then we made our escape path so people can leave. Cool. That's really neat, huh? Let's change our date and time right back. Cool. That's pretty nice. So, I guess one more thing that I want to talk about real quick is seasons. Hopefully this has already been a really interesting episode and helps you think of some cool events for you to put in your game. Let's uh, make a new person who will talk to us if it's winter. You can do this to check to see other seasons too, like if it's uh, fall. There we go, this kid. Oh no, I don't want to do that. I want to do instead insert a conditional branch. On the fourth page, script, all you have to do is this. PB is... Oh, I have to actually type it out properly. Is winter. There we go. If it's winter, he'll say, yo. And if it's not winter, he'll say, boo. Cool. The way that they determine what is winter versus not winter is actually back in that script we were looking at earlier, p field underscore time. I highly recommend you just look at this and like comb through it if you're super interested in time-based events. There's, It's an interesting read. In fact, like, I learned everything that I need to do to make this tutorial from just combing the script. It's pretty good. Anyway, down towards the bottom, they define seasons. The way that they define seasons is a little bit perplexing because, I mean, it doesn't actually align with how I imagine the seasons to work. Like, I don't consider October to be summer, but that's just how they're defined currently in Pokemon Essentials. I haven't done much to like mess around with them or change them at all, but winter would be December. And I guess also April and August? I don't know. It doesn't make the most sense, but it is December. Which means, according to PB is winter, it should be true. Meaning, this kid should talk to us since it's December. Let's talk to him and see what he has to say. Hello there, little boy. Wait, did that kid just disappear? Kid? What did I do? What did I do to make this kid disappear? old man if it's winter he'll say yo otherwise he'll say boo yes was I standing on top of him I hope not all right so let's get back in there and uh, double check this why is that person not appearing I'm gonna take a little bit of a break and get back to you on this all right I'm back I don't know exactly what was going on there but I just made a new game and now the guys here I must have had some sort of error with my save data previously where I was messing around with events and since he was the 10th event maybe it was like set to off anywho we have our old man back he's here it's working so if I talk to him he should say yo since it is winter yo cool if I change my month now he should say something else he should say boo it's November now what do you have to say about that, old man? Boo! He doesn't like it. Let's go back to winter. I think he likes that better. I 
think I like it better too. I personally like it better when it's a little bit cold outside. You know, get a little bit of rain. Ooh, that's nice. Although, I have been freezing lately. God, my fingers are so cold. Yo! Cool! Now it's working. You can do this for the other seasons too by calling these methods. Is spring, or PB is spring, PB is summer, PB is autumn, and then people will uh, talk to you or say different things depending on what season it is in your game. Cool! Well, Thank you very much for watching. I hope this episode helped, and I hope you found it interesting. There are some things that I didn't touch in this episode that I would want to touch upon in a later episode separately, such as events that have a timer, like you turn in a nut to Kurt, or what's it? Uh, what does he take? Berries? Acorns? Anywho, <laughs> I'm sorry. You would turn them into him, and uh, you would give them to him, and then it would take a day to process that event, and then he would you know, give you a Pokeball at the end of that day. So events that require you to wait a set amount of time. I would want to cover that in a different episode. Hopefully this episode, though, helped you out figuring out some events that you would want to do. Check to see specific months, or if you wanted to, you could check, like, month, you know, ranges. Like, you could make your own seasons if you wanted to by saying, like, if month is greater than or equal to 10 and less than something else. Um, you can check dates, times, hours, minutes, weekdays. You can make legendary Pokemon appear or disappear depending on the weekday. Remember to use that parallel process. If you use an auto run, it'll make your game crash. There's other ways to do it, but like, I hope that this helped. There's some really interesting stuff that you can do that's time related. And it's really cool to see it reflected by your computer's time and watch it like be up to the minute, up to the second, how specific it is. It's great. I hope that you liked this episode. I hope it was helpful. Um, I just felt like recording something because, I don't know, I was in the mood to. I felt like getting back into it a little bit today. And uh, it was kind of nice combing through all the stuff again. Like, I just learned it all by messing around with Pokemon Essentials. I feel like I need to make an episode for you guys to just talk about how my thought process is when messing around with stuff and just teaching it to myself. Because I think learning to teach yourself is so god dang important. It's a lot of fun, too. And, uh, yeah. Thank you all for watching this episode once again, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.